When building IoT solution end-to-end, -end, you need to have a very strong app platform like Azure IoT Central, and then you need to have some things like IoT Edge, which allow you to build topologies with gateways and leaf devices. Runga joins me today on the IoT Show to tell us everything we need to know about IoT Edge integration with IoT Central. Hi, everyone. Thanks for watching the Internet of Things show. I'm Olivier, your host, and today Ranga is with me to discuss IoT Edge with Azure IoT Central. Ranga, thanks for joining the show again. Thank you, Olivier, for inviting me. Of course, always. So, and you always come with gizmos. Yes. That's pretty cool. <laughs> We're going to see cool demos today. Right. Ranga, um, before we jump into the topic and the demos, can you tell our audience who you are? What are you doing at Microsoft? Sure. I'm Ranga Vadlamudi. I'm a program manager in IoT Central team. And uh, my current focus is enabling IoT Edge with IoT Central. So IoT Edge in IoT Central is a new feature. Mm -hmm. uh, it's in preview right now, mm -hmm. soon to be released. Um, the idea is to allow connecting and managing right. the IoT Edge devices from the Azure IoT Central applications, right? right? right. So um, what are the main scenarios? People know about Azure IoT Edge, mm -hmm. but to understand better how that integration works with Azure IoT Central, I think it's interesting to talk about what kind of main scenarios we are addressing and people are using IoT Edge devices for. Sure. Uh, as of November, right, uh, IoT devices used to connect into IoT Central. Mm -hmm. But from November, as we uh, enable this feature, IoT Edge devices can connect into IoT Central. So what it means is IoT Central is managing those de uh, devices yeah. at scale sending deployment manifests at scale. Okay. And also what we do is we support uh, different types of edge devices, like okay. the edge as a leaf device, okay. edge as a gateway device, which has downstream devices connected. Okay. Uh, and also uh, off-the-shelf uh, devices like our Vision AI dev kit mm -hmm. uh, can hook into IoT Central and start streaming data. Interesting. We, are, we have some episodes about the, uh, the Vision AI right. dev kit. So right. now we can, we're going to be able to do exactly. IoT Edge uh, and uh, Vision AI from IoT Central. It's right. pretty cool. And then there's the NVIDIA uh, devices which can do Love AI Love it. Central. Yeah. So pure IoT Edge devices where you can run your AI on IoT Edge and, and run these workloads. And you were saying as well, and we'll talk about that, gateways. Mm -hmm. right? gateways in the sense of having leaf devices behind these gateways that may not speak the same protocol or the, an IP-based protocol or might be behind a firewall or something that you right. need to go through IoT Edge to connect them to the rest it, of the world. Exactly. So the way uh, we describe in Central is either the gateway shows up in Central yeah. and the leaf devices are hidden mm -hmm. or the leaf devices also show up in Central and we have uh, operator experiences where the operator gets a view of both the gateway device and the downstream devices. And right. as we do the demos, I'll show you some of that. Well, let's jump into the topic. So what should someone expect in terms of features when it comes to IoT Edge in Azure IoT Central? Sure. As far as the feature set is concerned, so what we have done is uh, for provisioning and connectivity, uh, uh, IoT Central always had uh, uh, DPS integration. So that means IoT Central is powered by DPS. Okay. Uh, so uh, what we had to do for Edge is uh, we had to enable edge devices to work with uh, DPS in central. Got it. So that was the integration we uh, we uh, brought in, along with uh, we now support individual enrollments, which was not there before November, and the individual enrollments along with TPM support. Got so it. we have uh, symmetry key support, uh, X509 certs, and then TPM. So basically, what was supported for regular devices now fully supported on IoT edge devices exactly. as well. Exactly. Love it. Okay. And then uh, the other, uh, so that's the command and control. Uh, yep. And then there are other features like module management from IoT Central. Mm -hmm. So you can actually uh, bring in the concept of a module, which was uh, uh, connecting into IoT Hub, now mm -hmm. uh, can also connect into IoT Central. And uh, IoT Central is basically powered by IoT Hub. Awesome. So, yeah. And then the next thing is, once you have that connectivity and uh, you're able to do module management, you're able to actually deploy, send a uh, deployment manifest into the edge. Now edge starts to, edge device starts to send telemetry. So within central, now you can actually start building dashboards to, for mm -hmm. an operator to be able to view the data, to see how the devices are uh, behaving yeah. and also uh, do command and control. So that means they can send commands into the edge modules 
so the edge modules can react accordingly. Love it. So, and we'll see that. So you have right. a view of the edge device, but also a view of the modules are running on it from it, IoT Central. It, exactly, right? exactly. Okay. And uh, it will be almost like whatever view you're seeing in IoT yeah. Edge will uh, show up in IoT Central real okay. time. So, uh, the next thing is uh, once you have that modules deployed on the edge, mm -hmm. the visualization, the analytics, the rules engine, all that is brought into the central as a end-to-end -end solution. Got it. And we'll go through some of the rules engines, we'll set up a, a, a rule uh, and then uh, uh, okay. take an action. Okay, right? can't wait. Uh, and then there is the, uh, uh, that's what I talked mm -hmm. about, the rules yeah. and actions, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, and then we talk about device relationships. Okay. So what we brought uh, into central as a metadata concept is whatever devices uh, are running on the edge, uh, as far as both the gateway device and the downstream device, mm -hmm. now that view is brought into uh, an operator experience where an operator can actually look at a gateway device yeah. and see what are all the downstream devices which mm. are connected. Because uh, the principle right. is that sometimes the gateway can be tra transparent and the leave devices, downstream devices actually show up in your solution right. as what they are, right? You have a uh, conveyor belt on the factory floor. Right. It doesn't matter from certain operations perspective whether it goes through a gateway or another, but it can matter. Exactly. Uh, if you have problems, you need to debunk or update or things like right. that, right? And also if you want to send uh, commands to the uh, leaf devices from the gateway. So you go to the gateway, find its leaf devices, and start sending commands. Got it. Okay. And also another concept what we did was any devices which are not Azure IoT Edge devices, mm -hmm. but have downstream devices and act like a gateway, we brought in that relationship also into IoT okay. Central. Okay. So, Love it. Yep. Uh, and then what I'll do is I'll just go over some of the uh, our modeling concepts. So mm -hmm. when you uh, go and create like a edge device in central, right? The first thing you need is a device template, which acts like a spec for yep. that device, right? Yep. So what you do is you define what is the telemetry of the device, what are the commands, what are the properties, mm -hmm. and how are the relationships built. Yep. So if you look at this diagram, what we have done is we have something called uh, uh, in IoT Central a device capability model. Okay. So you, do, you basically build a device capability model. Mm -hmm. So we brought in the concept of a module capability model. Okay. Yep. So every module will have its own capabilities which have properties, commands, and uh, telemetry. Uh, and that's what this diagram uh, talks about. So uh, you, what you do is you create a device capability model, you create your edge module capability models, okay. and then interfaces okay. uh, around it. That's logical. Right. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll jump into a demo, like uh, and uh, I'll start with this device. So okay. Moxa is a partner of ours and okay. has been a great partner building uh, uh, edge solutions uh, connecting into Azure IoT. Okay. And uh, what uh, we have here is a, a solar power monitoring system, okay. which uh, basically this is the edge device connecting through Modbus uh, mm -hmm. into that uh, the the plant and starting to get telemetry and uh, pump it into okay, so that's, the cloud. So this is the actual device running at the edge. Right. So here, what is that? Is that a Modbus like module that actually is, is getting the sensors data right. and feeds the, um, mo the the Modbus module running on IT Edge, right? Right, okay. and that, that's provided by Moxa and uh, it's basically powered by yeah. Azure IoT Edge awesome. uh, runtime. So it's on the catalog. People can find, you know, exactly. in the certified exactly. for IoT catalog, that device, it, as well as the modules for working with right. it. Right, and I'll, I'll show you that, right? So okay. once, so we have an app here mm -hmm. and uh, if you look at the uh, Moxa device, uh, which is connecting into the cloud, mm -hmm. so that's our dashboard. So I'll quickly show you. We built a dashboard. There's data coming in, uh, and also uh, we have some map uh, integration, okay. yeah. where uh, this device right now is on, uh, in this building and it's showing up uh, real time okay. uh, on the nice. map, right? Nice. And if you look at this, I have created some shortcuts. You can okay. create shortcuts uh, on your dashboarding. Yeah. So if I click on this, it's actually taking me to the catalog where uh, uh, the Moxa device is actually part of our Azure IoT mm -hmm. uh, catalog, and you can go and look at the uh, details of that device and uh, okay. what what it supports, what mm -hmm. are the processors, all that stuff, right? Okay. So let's get back to the uh, dashboard. The next thing, uh, what you'll do is, I'll actually go into a, a device template okay. of uh, this device, what we have done. So mm -hmm. you'll actually see a capability model, okay. and then there is a one module running, Okay. And it describes all the capabilities, the properties, the telemetry, the commands, right? Okay. Uh, and then you have dashboards. So this is the dashboard which uh, you can adjust your mm -hmm. dashboards according to yeah. your uh, operator experience. And then once you publish this template, mm -hmm. 
Now you have a spec for your Moxa devices okay. of this type, right? So basically, you create, as the device manufacturer or solution developer, you create a model eventually in IoT Central, and then you can export that as a model that others can use, right? Exactly. Okay. E exactly. And you, you could do that. Uh, you can actually uh, mm -hmm. export the uh, capability model, which will export the okay. modules, and then you can uh, nice. go ahead and uh, uh, okay. uh, distribute, right? So the next thing what we'll do is, uh, we'll go into de devices. So what mm -hmm. I've done is I've actually connected this device. Okay. Uh, uh, and uh, the way you do it is you actually go into the connect. This is the cloud okay. first. Yeah, there is yeah, a yeah, yeah. there is a device first too on yeah. how you connect. So mm -hmm. it gives you a scope ID because it's powered by DPS. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there's the registration ID, which is your device ID, yeah, yeah. and the derived key, okay. uh, which is basically. Uh, uh, you have a master key and then you get yeah. the derived key. Yeah. Right? So it's pretty much exact same mechanism as for a regular IoT device it, it, exactly. so you connect to IT Central, exactly. right? And okay. the only difference what we had to do is if you go into administration um, and uh, device connect, there is a, uh, a, a different kind of device type which is Azure Edge oh, okay. devices. Okay. So the two types we support is uh, uh, symmetric key and X509 mm -hmm. for a group enrollment. Uh -huh. And if you uh, enable an individual enrollment, then you can go uh, also with TPM. Got it. Right? Okay. So this is the master key, this is the root cert, and then every device gets its own derived key so that uh, mm -hmm. you're not putting multiple, yeah. same device key uh, into the into multiple devices. Okay, makes right? sense. So, so then once you go in here, well, one thing you can do is you can actually uh, uh, look at the actual device. Mm -hmm. So we have created some dashboarding here. Yep. Uh, and also what I've done is I've created a cloud property to yep. attach the device location. So here I give a latitude, longitude of okay. this device, so which is device for this and building. Yeah. Uh, and then modules, right? Uh, the modules is, what are all the modules running okay. on this device? So if okay. I, I actually have connected uh, to this device through a serial port, mm -hmm. and here are the Three modules, yeah. right? And so you were saying you retrieve the scope ID and and the device ID or the key, and then you configure like like you would any other IoT Edge device with information to hook up to DPS, right? That's the exact same thing, retrieving that information, that DPS information from the IoT Central. Exactly. Portal. And okay. if you go into the config YAML, you'll actually see uh, TPM support you'll, okay. uh, for DPS or even uh, symmetric key. Easy. You, you set it up and uh, start the device. You easy. You, so when the device starts here, right, mm -hmm. when it gets provisioned, the because we created a spec and uh, we have a deployment manifest yeah. uh, with that device template attached, okay. every device which uh, picks up that uh, device template mm -hmm. gets a deployment manifest. Because in a device template, you describe which modules exactly. are on that device or supposed to be on that device. Right. This is the way you configure the type of device in, in Central, right? right? And uh, where are the uh, images, uh, where is the image of the module? It could okay. be in a container registry, uh, okay. you, and uh, it's versioned, so you pick it up and push it here. Love it. And once you have that, you basically uh, can go ahead and uh, st start managing that device from okay. Central. Okay. So overall, uh, that's a, a LEAF device, right? Okay. So basically, uh, uh, that means it could have downstream mm -hmm. devices, but yeah. the downstream devices don't show up in yeah. Central. So it's more about what kind of workloads you're going to run on that IoT Edge device and how do you manage that from IoT Central. Right. Got it. So one thing what I wanted to uh, uh, finish up is uh, I've created a rule here. Yeah. Uh, so this rule is basically looking at uh, CPU usage. Okay. And if CPU usage uh, goes up, et cetera, you might want to monitor it, right? Okay. So I, I, I'm looking for an average okay. uh, of greater than 50. Uh, for every 30 minutes, so you can okay. do some windowing techniques. Mm -hmm. And I actually send out an email, right? Mm, so you it. can, if you go here, uh, I have an email which I received, which basically is telling me that, hey, there is a, mm -hmm. a, a plant monitoring station out yep. there, which is actually alerting, uh, so that an operator can uh, probably go open a ticket and okay. uh, send out an, uh, a field technician. Right. So right? exactly what we do with other regular devices. Let's switch into the gateway scenario, right? Sure. Let's let's discuss a bit about this like hierarchy or relationship that you mentioned earlier on. Right. Right. So what we'll do is uh, I'll go back to the uh, slide, and uh, quickly go over what relationships okay. mean. Right. Yeah. So if you look at this, basically we have an edge uh, gateway device. That mm -hmm. means it has downstream devices, right? Okay. Yeah. So uh, if you look at the edge patterns, mm -hmm. there is a transparent gateway pattern. What the transparent gateway pattern means is, 
the downstream devices are Wi-Fi enabled, mm -hmm. but they go through the edge gateway device okay. for offline scenarios. Okay. So there could be a truck uh, driving in uh, a remote location where they could lose connectivity, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and there could be like a fresh produce with a chiller. Okay. The driver will have to be notified in offline scenarios. Okay. So you basically go through the edge gateway and connect into the cloud at that time. Okay. Uh, the next uh, kind of scenarios is we actually support relationships with modules. So there could be a BLE module mm -hmm. which is discovering its own downstream devices okay. and you basically uh, attach those relationships uh, through a module instead of directly connecting uh, into the gateway. Makes like sense. in a building scenario, yeah. you could have a thermostat, you could have light switches, yep. all working on different protocols. Mm -hmm. So that's yep. the view here. So you can connect through multiple modules, each module discovering mm -hmm. its own downstream device, as well as there could be a downstream device which is Wi-Fi enabled directly connecting to the edge. Like in a consumer space, we call that a hub, right? So exactly. you have a, a Zigbee exactly. uh, hub, and that would be a module in the realm of ITF, right? Yes, and okay. uh, having its own protocols, okay. right? So then what we'll do is I'll go and demo. Uh, uh, what we have uh, as far as relationships is mm -hmm. concerned. So let's jump into another module, uh, sorry, another app. Okay. So here what I have is... It's the best app. It has the IoT show logo. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so if you look at this, I have a template, which is a, a edge gateway template. Okay. And the way we de describe relationships is we have a camera capability model. Okay. That means we have already defined the camera Mm -hmm. capability model. Now what I've done is I've actually attached uh, that camera as a relationship okay. uh, directly into the uh, gateway. Okay. Uh, not through a module. You can actually, uh, if you have a module which uh, has uh, downstream devices uh -huh. it can discover, you can set up relationships right there. Okay. So you have to have your IoT Edge device or your gateway device and then this other downstream device created or uh, the, the models created in the application and then when you configure the gateway itself, you're going to add the relationship for one of the device types that are in the application. Exactly. And, okay. and you're setting it up here. You can okay. have a generic one and let any device connect to mm -hmm. it. But uh, it will be good for the operator to understand, oh, this is a camera okay. versus this okay. is li light switch. Yeah, yeah. So now, uh, if you go to the devices itself, right? So what I have is, uh, I have a gateway template here, yep. and this gateway template, uh, it, 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 it's its own gateway, right? So basically yeah, yeah. it has its own dashboards, okay. uh, et cetera. So, uh, and then what we have is we have something called downstream devices. Okay. So I have these cameras which are connected to that gateway. So if you see that, an operator goes in there and looks at, oh, I have a southwest camera, I have mm -hmm. a east camera, et cetera and that relationships show up here. In and that will be very yeah. useful for the operator to be able to look at. I can right? imagine versus having a, a, a raw list of everything and then you have to go into the metadata to understand what's going on. You have a visual way of describing right. that topology. If you go back to the device list, right, mm -hmm. they all show up like on their own. Yep, nice. So that's the overall uh, 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 integration we have done yeah. with Edge and uh, brought in the concepts of gateways, brought in the concepts of relationships. Renga, thanks again for coming. Thank you, Olivier. Thanks for watching and see you soon on the IT Show.